This is the Lumens DC-170 Ladybug Document Camera. And I'm going to review a few of the features of this camera. It has numerous features, but for the purpose of this review, I'm only going to be addressing the features that are pertinent to homeschooling. Before I start my demonstration of some of the things that the camera does, let's take a look at, at some of the inputs and outputs that they've included in this camera. So here we have an SD card slot and you can place an SD card in there to either save your documents or your recordings or you can put recordings and documents onto the camera and you can utilize them for use later. Here we have an SD extender that will plug your document camera into a TV and then there's the USB input. We have a connection for your projector. We have a place where you can put headphones and then around the back of the camera we have the connection for your computer, your power cord, and an HDMI out port. Now one of the first features that I'm going to show you is something that I use a lot in my homeschooling classroom. Um, I have a book under the document cam so that the document document cam can look at that book and put it up on the whiteboard and you can do this also with a TV you can do it with a computer and you can do it with your whiteboard I'm going to be using the whiteboard just to keep it really large so you can see very well I have the smaller light on the document camera focused on the page so that it gives extra lighting I can also turn it away from the page or I can go to my remote control or my camera and turn the lighting up or down depending on my needs. Now, looking back to the whiteboard, the picture is really large, it's pretty clear, and every time you move whatever it is that you have under the camera, you're going to need to press your autofocus button so that it gives you a nice sharp image. And then we're going to talk about annotating onto this whiteboard image in order to either save paper or so that your students can see it at the same time if you're teaching a class with, with uh, various students in it. Now I'm going to move my annotation over a little bit and you can click on the pencil. Now on the annotation there's typing. You can type. You can do lines. like so and it makes it perfectly straight and freezes it for you. You can create shapes such as a circle, a square, or a rectangle, any, any uh, version of a circle or square. And then you can also annotate directly onto it using a very light setting, for example, for highlighting. If you're going to highlight text, you can go a little bit darker probably for that one. And then also you can use it really dark and I do this sometimes and you can cover up text. There's various colors that you can use. I typically just use one color to keep the distraction down. You can cover these up ahead of time and then you can come back later when you're presenting this and asking the children to name the various, for example, in this one we're naming the different parts of the bird, you can come back with your eraser and then you can erase it as they say them, erase it to check the answers. And then also you can utilize the garbage can to get rid of whatever you've highlighted or put on the screen. So we're going to talk about zooming in and out in order to fill out a worksheet. You go to your zoom button here 
or you can use the zoom on your remote control or the camera itself. Usually for me it's easier to do it right at the whiteboard, but either way works. And you use your little scroll bar to go up and down to zoom in and out. And then again, once you are at the place where you want your page, you're going to autofocus again using either this button or the autofocus on your remote control. And then again, filling in the worksheet on the page so that you can save it or so that all the children can see it. So for example, if I were going to fill out, let's see, let's go to letter C, which is going to be the crown of this bird. And the first thing I want to do is check the darkness of my ink that I'm putting on the board, then the color that I want to put on the board, and last, and most certainly not least, I want to make sure the line width. Because if I'm highlighting, I want a thicker line. If I'm going to write, I'm going to want a thinner line. So here I've changed my line width to four. I'm going to put the letter C where the crown goes. And there we have it. Now, you can save it like this. You can save it blank and you can save it filled in. So let's say the kids are doing a worksheet and then you want them to be able to self-check the answers on the whiteboard afterwards. You could do that. You could have it blank, have them fill it in, and then you can have a saved one with the answers. Or if you just want to get rid of the answers at the end and you want to save your nice, you know, uh, blank sheet of paper, well, sheet of paper without the answers, then you can take this eraser with the page on it and you tap that eraser and it erases everything on the page. So again, if you have annotations on the page, various annotations on the page, and you've written on the page also, and then you want to just erase the whole thing, you can either step backwards one by one, or you can just erase the entire page and there you still have a perfectly uh, good blank sheet of paper for another time if you want to use it again. Another cool use that we've found for our document camera is to use it as a microscope. And here you can see I've placed a little pincher bug under the microscope in a container. Now you can zoom in using your document camera remote control or you can walk up to the board if you'd like to and you can zoom in doing that or another feature that has been added to this document camera is that you can use a mouse a USB mouse in order to annotate and you can use it on your computer if you're using your computer in order to zoom in to zoom out to save and so forth so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in on this little guy and autofocus get a little bit closer on him here and then I'm going to go over to my container and move it so that I can see him under the screen and then autofocus. Now this picture is not going to be a great picture because I have put him in a container that's a little bit foggy so you can see and with this you can also go to your annotations and you can annotate here as well. Oops. Let's go to the circle here. So I'm explaining something to them about the antenna and I can put a circle um, or I can tell about you know various various features about this little guy here. And it's kind of small but the larger the bug or the animal or whatever it is that you're putting under this microscope, the better it's going to show up. Now having the document camera as a microscope not only works for live creatures, but it also works for things such as seeing the detail in a dollar bill or in a coin or looking at various uh, artifacts and so forth and seeing the great detail in those things. And here I'll autofocus a little bit more so you can see a little bit better um, things that kids typically would not notice on a dollar bill, such as the lines on the number one or the wording.
Now another thing that I use this document camera for is to set up for the children's music lessons. I can project a page on the board. I can also use the document camera to shine on the child while they're doing a music lesson or while they're practicing on the piano and record their practice session and then play it back later for them to look at to see what things that they did well and what things that they need improvement on. Just a couple of now there's just a couple more features that I wanted to uh, demonstrate on this camera. One of them is that if this little panel that shows the different features is in the way or you need to move it to see something, you just hold on to that little ladybug there and move it around until it's moved out of the way. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was a spotlight. Now you could choose between a square spotlight and a round spotlight and you could move it to wherever it is that you want it, that you want to move it to and and highlight whatever it is that you want to highlight and then let's open back up this and you take it away again and the other thing is uh, the mask here that we talked about earlier where you could mask and then you could slowly uh, review reveal the mask now the mask has various degrees of darkness so zero percent would be showing nothing and you could show it little by little like this and then also taking the mask down uh, here you just click on the mask itself and you can reveal a few answers at a time or whatever it is that happens to be under the mask that you have on the board. You could also click here and extend the mask by highlighting it, clicking on that mask and let's see here, there we are, and extending it. Okay, again back to the ladybug and you take the mask away. So here on the screen you can see the remote control and it comes with a little lanyard that you can put around your neck so you're not fishing around for the remote control as you're teaching your lesson. It has all the features that are included on the whiteboard and it also, which I'll show you in just a moment, has a handy little pocket um, that you can put it in that connects directly to the document camera. Okay. So here's the docking station to the camera. And what you do is you just put the remote control here and there it stays for you until the next time you're ready to use it so it's easier to keep up with it. And then also on the document camera itself, there are several of the features here on the button, for example, there's zoom in and zoom out, play, your autofocus button, the button for your lighting, and your menu button, and power on and off button. So the last feature that I want to discuss is the SD card to this document camera. Now this is just an ordinary SD card that you would use for a camera or for a computer or you can even use the SD card, the micro SD card, as long as you have an adapter for it to put into the document camera. You slide it in here into the SD card slot. If the camera is off, the SD card will function just like any other SD card that you have in your computer. It will bring up whatever is in the SD card. Photos, documents, saved files from your document camera. Anything that you freeze, take a picture of, or record can also be brought up without the document camera by removing the SD card and placing it in the computer and accessing it just as you would any other uh, SD files. So, for example, if your SD card slot is D, you would double click on D and it will show you everything that's on that SD card. And then the last way that you can access those items is on the camera software itself, you will be able to see everything that pertains to the Lumens document camera that's on that card.
So in summary, this Lumens DC170 doc document camera has virtually changed the way that I homeschool. It's allowed me to do recordings. It's allowed me to have a nice microscope for the children to be able to view various items and, and animals. And it also has allowed me to be able to save uh, paper and time and to be able to work problems right on the whiteboard without having to uh, pull up another type of software. So it's, so it's very multifunctional for us. As a homeschooler, I appreciate some of the features, especially the feature of the remote control that I can walk around the room and be teaching, zooming in, zooming out, revealing, unrevealing, recording, uh, and then also that it has allowed me to connect to so many different uh, places, for example, the computer, the TV, and the whiteboard. I really like this DC-170 document camera and I think that you'll like it as well.